wasn't that long ago that Intel pulled back the curtain on its 10th generation 10 nanometer ice lake processors for laptops and other ultra portables, and that was a big deal. I mean, Intel had previously released some 10 nanometer Canon Lake CPUs, but that barely counted as a launch. This time, the company is going big on them, and it's really no surprise either. Because these new processors are based on a smaller die, they're more power efficient without sacrificing much in the way of performance. What is a surprise is that Intel just announced a new handful of 10th generation Comet Lake processors based on a 14 nanometer production process that we'll have to take a closer look at. If you really wanted to go big with a Comet Lake chipset, you're looking at the i7-10710U, which is a total mouthful, but it's easily the most interesting of them all. The big upgrade here is that it packs six cores and 12 threads, a single core turbo speed of 4.7 gigahertz, and an all core turbo at 3.9 gigahertz. And that's definitely no slouch. At full blast, its turbo speeds are clocked slightly higher than the top tier Ice Lake chip Intel announced in early August. The next model down from there, the i7-10510U is slightly easier to say, but offers slightly higher turbo speeds to boot, but only four cores and eight threads. If you keep going down the list from there, you'll eventually land on the Core i3-10110U, which runs at a higher base clock speed than both of those other chips, but is limited by the fact that it only has two cores and four threads. Of course, Intel has some more modest, I guess also known as cheaper, Y-series options to show off for things like two-in-ones and super, super portable, inexpensive laptops. These lower end Y series chips haven't always made for the most seamless performance, so it's been tough at times to use one of them in your primary machine. That might change this year since all but the most mild mannered Comet Lake Y series processor offers four cores and eight threads, and that's something that's just never happened before. And beyond that, these chips also require noticeably less power to run than those newfangled Ice Lake equivalents, so we wouldn't be surprised to see Comet Lake Y series chips wind up in a lot of super affordable or very portable machines in time. So, why should you buy a machine with one of these chips in it? Well, maybe you shouldn't. There are a few drawbacks here to keep in mind. Since these Comet Lake chips are based on an older production process, not a single one of them packs Intel's improved Iris Plus integrated graphics. For a lot of you watching this, that might be reason enough to skip Comet Lake altogether, though I should point out it probably won't be a huge deal for more basic use. And if you're on the market for a low-powered machine that would have a Y-series chip in it, these Comet Lake versions can't boost as fast as their Ice Lake counterparts, and they also have slightly slower memory interfaces. We obviously can't make any final judgment calls until we've started testing PCs with these new chips in them, but at this point, it kind of seems like all Intel really managed to do is make its own lineup even harder to understand. And that's what we're here for, to break down the day's tech news for you. So thanks again for watching and be sure to subscribe.